Next thing we need to do is reinstall this bearing. Now, if you have a bike with a Kickstarter, then this is gonna to look totally different in here. There's gonna be a gear there instead, but the non-Kickstarter models don't have that. So if this looks different than what you have, it's because you got a Kickstarter bike and maybe someday we'll do a Kickstarter gearbox part two, I don't know. So now we're gonna press this apart. Now let's look at the different bearings before we go any further. This first bearing that we replaced here, that's simple enough. That's a that's, that's a very different, that's a cylindrical roller bearing. It's totally different than the rest of them. So let's get our ducks in a row here. All right. So this is the bearing 6403 that's going to go here on that shaft. And this is the 6304. This is, notice that it's sealed. It's got a seal. That's going to go here on that intermediate shaft. This is the, the big one. This is the uh, 6304. And this is going to go here on the end of the output shaft. And then we've got a couple of 6304s. There's a 6304C3, which is the open bearing. Two of those. And the 6304 sealed bearings. Those are gonna go, we're putting the sealed bearings on the cluster shaft, the intermediate shaft. And we're gonna put one of the open bearings on that shaft, and that leaves us with changing out this thing so we can finish up this input shaft thing that we started. And to do that, now I'm gonna go ahead to the press again and press the center part out and press the bearing back onto it. Just take a moment. Okay, that worked out pretty good. Didn't bend it. I've taken a bunch of these gearboxes apart where somebody's worked on them before and a lot of times that part's all mangled and bent and it's something you want to try to avoid, I think. Um, and so just simply clean those parts up a bit and press this new bearing right back on there again. Okay, you could, you could actually heat this up and drop it on, that's a totally good idea. Even put the centerpiece in the freezer, but to cool it down and then get an interference fit. But it's not, this is not a super tight fit on this thing. I can even get it part of the way on with my fingers. So I'm just gonna press it on cold. I think that totally works in this application. And then at the same time, this needs to get pressed on like so. And so that can actually all be done in one motion. Here we go. And just to finish things up with the input shaft, we'll go ahead and put that new um, seal in there too, so that that's all done. All right, the new seal is included with the gasket kit. And just set that in there. And then you need some sort of little bearing driver or something like that to put that, to knock that in. Set that right in like that. There we go. Okay, so that's all set. Ready for installation. Let's move on to the next component. Go ahead and work on the cluster shaft next. Yeah. Otherwise known as intermediate shaft. And pretty straightforward. All we're going to do here is pull these bearings off and put new ones on. Now this one has an open bearing on there. We usually put the sealed bearings on this particular shaft. That's what we've been doing, and that seems to be a good idea. So we'll go ahead and pull those off with Mr. Kuko here. Thank you. 
But that's pretty much the setup that we're going to need here to pull this apart. Um, before tightening everything down, I'm put, putting this on there and actually tightening this pretty well so that it gets a good bite on that bearing. Has to actually, so it kind of pushes underneath. Sometimes it'll even bring it up just by the wedge shape of the puller. And then now we can get this all set up. Great, so that made pretty short work of that. All right, so that's that bearing. Now we'll flip it over and do the other side. And that's actually a lot easier to deal with because you don't have that really super tight fit like you did on the other end. So we'll go ahead and put that part in there again, that little push. Okay, so that's the setup for the other end. Same arrangement pretty much. We'll get this guy nice and tight first. There we go. Okay, so here, you, here we have it. Now, this intermediate shaft is not actually sold from BMW in any other way than complete. Um, the gears are not available, nor have they ever been available separately. However, we do have a lot of these gears and we have replacement intermediate shafts. So we can actually repair this part. You don't need to change the whole thing. We also have a lot of used parts too. So if sometimes we'll find uh, something that's really trash, we might have something used that's better or in really good shape that we can run. But we do have, just so you know, we do have a lot of these intermediate shaft parts um, available and in stock uh, mostly all the time. But this one looks great. Um, amazingly, no bad wear anywhere. Looks cherry. So I'm just gonna put these new bearings on and move on to the output shaft. Yeah, and if you ever are interested in any used parts or looking for used part, best to give us a call. Call us and talk to the guys in the, in the shop at Planworks here and we'll see what we can do. You won't find really any used parts on our website. Just getting it started by hand and then I'm just gonna press, press on both bearings at the same time. All right, that's two out of three. Now let's get into the output shaft. So I am a little bit concerned about how easy that um, flange came off, but the, the actually the, looking at the, the shaft itself on this taper, doesn't look like it's been damaged in any way. So let's call that good. Uh, and then otherwise we're gonna just pull this bearing off. And then a word about this rear bearing. So you see this has a circlip installed and some of the early five speeds had that, some of the later five speeds didn't, but it's not a bad idea to have it on there. It keeps the, keeps the uh, shaft from sort of wandering on there. And um, this is a modification that we can do here in house if you have a box apart and you don't have that circlip on there. It's a good idea to have that installed and have that machined out. So something we can help you with. And whenever we rebuild these big gearboxes, if it doesn't have the circlip on there, we just do it. It's just part of, part of our transmission rebuild service that we do here. Okay, I got a good bite on that bearing. And now, we'll go in and tighten this up and pull it the rest of the way. Okay, so there's that one. And the replacement. 
You be careful, these will come apart, but you can actually go ahead and have a look at these bushings. See what kind of shape they're in. Feel for any abnormal play. This one's pretty tight. So it looks pretty good. Okay, so just gonna be mindful that that could just slip right off. Okay, there's the setup for removing that bearing. This one I've got pretty tight. And just to get started, I put the compression piece on there, although it's too big. This, in this case, it's not going to fit through, but it's the best support piece I have to get this started. See, it's starting to move. I'm going to go ahead and put something else in there to go the rest of the way. This is just a smaller little bushing I have out of, out of a bushing driver set that'll work to get it the rest of the way off. Okay, now we can look at the rest of these parts. See what kind of shape everything's in. Feels really good. Looks really good. We got pretty lucky on this gearbox. So now comes the fun part. All right, so here we have it, the output shaft. And I'm gonna do something kind of cool. We have this longer fifth gear wheel that we can put on here. So here's the deal. Once you remove that bearing, this gear wheel comes right off of there. And then this replaces it. And that gives you about a 5% higher gear ratio. It adds up to a nice little boost in your top speed and keeps the RPMs lower in fifth gear. So it's a really cool thing. It's just a direct replacement. You don't, you're not replacing anything but one gear. And um, it has 20 teeth as opposed to 21 teeth on the original. And that makes the difference in top speed. So maybe somebody can figure that out, how, what that means. But it's a beautiful part and fits right on. Now, there are two of these. You have to, going back to the X thing again, there's a little X stamped in here. And because this mates with the input shaft, which we talked about earlier, and so it also has to have the 17.5 degree cut gears, otherwise they won't mesh properly. So if you do put a taller fifth gear, Make sure you determine if your bike is the X version or not. Very important. So it simply fits right in there like that. And so we can go ahead and put the bearings on now in the press and then um, keep going. Okay, there we go. That's all done, new bearings and a new taller fifth gear. So I'm gonna put a new clip on there too. Make sure you remember always the sharp side up. There we go, snapped in nicely. We've got the gear shafts all ready to install, the bearings are replaced. And there's a couple things I wanna do to these case parts before I go and clean them and then we can continue with reassembly. So starting with the cover here, I'm um, just going to go ahead and take the shims out so they don't get lost. And I want to remove the speedo drive and the output shaft seal. So this, I'm just going to remove the vent screw here. And then this bushing for the speedo drive. And then the speedo drive itself comes out just like that. Just pushes out. Has some wear on it, but it should be fine. And then the output shaft seal. 
So easiest way to really do that is just get that on the edge of the table like that. Don't want to put it on here. You might uh, potentially bend or damage the, the uh, part here for the release mechanism. But if you go out the edge of a table, like you just barely see there, I can get a little piece of it here with a drift and just knock it out easily enough. And go like right in this section here. See right there in that cutout there? Right there. We just basically smack that out of there without doing any damage at all. So that's ready for cleaning. And then this guy here, not much to do here, but I do want to just remove the fill plug. It's still in there. And Gonna pull out the seal for the shifter and remove the drain plug and neutral switch. These come out pretty easy. If you just you could just pry them out like that, nothing to it. And this is all ready to, for cleaning too. Oh, one more thing. We're gonna take this oil. This is a this piece of sheet metal in here is for the oil travel for the lubrication system inside the gearbox. Um, it's always a good idea to take that out when you're cleaning it. And that's just this Phillips screw on top. And the seal ring should be replaced on that screw when you put it back together again. And that seal ring is included in our gasket kit. Just pulls out just like that. All right, gonna get cracking on cleaning these parts up. Here they are. I cleaned them thoroughly and degreased them in the solvent tank and then went ahead and vapor blasted so the gearbox looks pretty much like brand new and like the rest of the bike will. And so let's go ahead and put everything back together now that we've got these parts clean. All right, we'll just start putting bits back together kind of in the same order we took them apart. Put this sheet metal piece in there and and to grab the new seal rings out of the kit. Okay, these are two little shims go back in. All right, so now the next day, thing we have to do is get this sucker pretty darn hot. So I'm gonna get the heat gun on it. Okay, let's hope that that's hot enough. It's pretty darn hot, so we've already got to move really quickly here. The first thing we're gonna do is put that cylindrical roller bearing in the middle. Hopefully that should just drop right in. Otherwise, we'll just give it a tap and then it should slip in pretty easy. There it goes, nice. Okay. It's a pretty important first step because you can't get it in later. So now I've got the two shafts just like they came out and the shift fork on there just like that. And I'm gonna line up the shift fork over that shaft. And then with a little luck, just drop these right into place. Just give it a little tap. There we go, just they fell right in. Just need that little tap, plenty hot. Those are home, everything's good. So now we can put the, we can put these shift forks back in. We'll put the shift forks back in like this. They go onto the output shaft and push that down. So that's done. And now the input shaft can go in. There we go. Okay, that's all set. Now the next thing we gotta do is shim it, but we need to let it cool a little bit because everything has to be at room temperature. So um, I guess we'll go grab a coffee or something and come back and do that in a bit. All right, it's all cooled down now, ready to move on. I'm gonna start out by putting on the gasket. And then this is another one of those things where you need a special tool. 
and this is not something so easy to come by. This is the measuring plate. The, this will hold the shafts into position while you measure the end play. As you can see, they can move. They're not, you know, they're, they're, they're just sort of ball bearings, you know, so it needs, when you make your measurement, everything needs to be all lined up. So that's where this plate comes into play and it fits on there. Now, I like to, some people don't, I think, measure with the gasket. There's different ways you can do, you can do it with or without the gasket. The, the gasket is approximately 0.3 millimeters thick. I just measured it. So, I mean, you could add that in later or just go ahead and put it in. Um, either way. Okay, so now I've got that special measuring plate installed and the bolts are just snug. You don't want to go crazy, but um, if you're measuring it without a gasket, if you do that, then you have to make sure you add the thickness of the gasket when you do your calculations. And in per for the purposes of calculation, what I always do is make myself a little chart like this. It just works, works for me. And um, you, you need to have a, a, a very accurate depth gauge. So what I need to do is, first of all, put my glasses on. And then we can start with, for example, the counter shaft. And so measuring here from the outer brace, put that on nice and square, down to the plate. And then see what we got. So I've got 6.55. I'm going to do that a few times before I decide that that's the number. Five. Getting more like 6.5. So I'm going to run with that. And so for the count. Counter shaft, 6.5. Now, input shaft. Six point eight five. Six point eight five. Six eight five input shaft. Six point five millimeters. Let's try it one more time. Six point five millimeters on the output shaft for the case for the uh, case. Output shaft. Now there's a little more to it. Because on the counter shaft, we need to put the shim back on. So you could measure it with it in place, with it off. It doesn't really matter that much. I like doing it the way I did it actually more. So I'll make sure that my gauge is zeroed here. And this thing is, should be pretty much exactly 0.5. And it is. That's the way that they get it. You can check it a couple times. But it is nominally 0.5 millimeters. Point four nine point point five. That's that's what it is. So we can go right back in. So we have to add point five to that measurement on the counter shaft. So six point five plus five is actually seven. So that's what that is. Okay. Now the next thing we do is we have to measure from on the cover. And guess what? To do the cover, you kind of really need another special sort of tool. Um, you at least need to have a depth gauge that has a wide base on it, whether it's this exact one or not, because sometimes these covers can be a little bit distorted, I think. And you, it's imperative that you're actually measuring the depth down to the bearing surface from the gasket surface. 
and not from around here. You can't assume that, unless it's absolutely perfectly flat, but that's what, that's the reason why this gauge is so big as it is, so that you can actually span the whole cover plate and make a measurement from the gasket surface. So for this measurement, I put the cover in a vise. It's just a lot easier to deal with. Make sure it's nice and tight in there using some soft jaws. And I'm gonna do the same thing, take a few measurements around onto the surface where the bearing and the shim will be and measure the depth. for the input shaft. Okay, so now, now we have to do some, some very difficult mathematics here. The plate is 7.5 millimeters thick, so we need to add 7.5 millimeters to these dimensions. Now I've, I've got the measurements kind of figured out, and then we need to also remember that we need some play. We need a, a tenth of a millimeter of play. Try to find shims that those thicknesses and, and to get this thing buttoned up. Before putting the shims in place, I'm gonna put the shift mechanism back in. And that's a fairly straightforward thing to do. Okay, so you wanna put the bolts in, you have to knock them up a little bit into the case because they're a tight fit. They're kind of a press fit almost. So it's a lot easier if you move them up a bit and then drop the shift mechanism into place onto the protruding bolts. You don't want to go all the way in, just move them up to basically where the shoulder is just flush with the case. And then set your shift mechanism in place and then you have to sort of move the shift forks up so that they go into their respective slots. A lot of stuff going on all at the same time. Okay, it's not always easy, but you gotta get those bolts in and everything lined up and the shift forks in and that is successful. So now we'll go ahead and move on with the rest of the procedure here. I'll put the gasket back on again. And I'll refer to my notes and get some shims. Okay, so let's see here. I'll take, always starting with the shims that came out of the gearbox. May have to add, maybe they're the wrong size, something like that. Simply measure the shims and come up with the thicknesses that I need based on my chart that I made. Okay, I've got my shims all in place um, and thicknesses calculated based on the measurements that I took before. And before we go any further, I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on the shims. Well, you want to use something sticky like wheel bearing grease or something like that. I'm using, in this case, the socks grease for the splines of the clutch because it's, a, it's really gooey, it's made, made not to fling off or go away. You don't, certainly don't need much. It's really just there to keep the, the uh, shims from f scooting out of place. You just put a little dab, couple dabs on there and stack them in to place. There we go. Okay, I think I got pretty well everything lined up. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to heat up the cover and slip it into place. Okay, that's pretty hot now. And 
hopefully we'll just should just slide right into place without too much difficulty. Just line everything up perfectly if you can. And if you do, you should be able to more or less just pop it on with your fist and maybe a little help with a mallet. All right. Now put some new bolts in there. And the old bolts that came out are kind of okay, but they're, they're not in that great a shape anymore. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace them. We've got the, the perfect replacement bolts for these covers. These are zinc plated just like the originals and we've also got the, the small outer diameter washers for this application, they're ideal. Okay, so those are all torqued down to spec, and sometimes after you put the cover on, you just need to give the shaft, especially the input shaft, just a little tap. There we go, spinning nicely. And now the flange that I think is gonna engage nicely on there. We'll give it a try. Uh, first thing though is to put the new seal in and that's going to go in like this and it's this is the right time to do it before we put the flange in place. A big socket works great for this. In this case I have a 48 millimeter socket and fits in there real nicely just like that. Little, little flange on there and the washer and the nut I'm going to replace with a new one. This, by the way, the nut comes already with some red Loctite on the threads, so it's just ready to install and it's a good thing to have. All right, so now we go back to that first special tool, one of the first special tools, tools that we used and put that back on Okay, that's all ready to go. Now get, get my torque wrench. Okay, so now we got that all set up. I got my torque wrench here. Um, there's a couple of different specs on these depending on the model year. This, so always check your specs yourself, but this one takes a whopping 220 Newton meters. And so I'm using this big bar again here. Let's set my torque wrench in here. Actually, that's What's gonna, that's how we're gonna do it. First, I'm just gonna snug it down, get past that Loctite. All right, so that's tight now. So now I'm gonna put the pipe on here. Okay, next we'll put the shifter seal in. Not much to that. Make sure that this is this bushing's all the way in, and then the seal gets driven in with a suitable seal driver. Something like this here, out of a seal driver set, is perfect, and we'll just tap that in. 
we go. And now we can go ahead and put the shifter lever back in. Cool, now we can actually also test the shifting. There we go. There's neutral. First gear. So all the gears are shifting, feels good. And let's finally put in the input shaft seal. And here again, a socket works great. It's a 30 millimeter. It's the outside diameter is just a fraction, maybe less than a millimeter, less than a millimeter less than the outside diameter of the seal. So it's a perfect tool and set that on there. And in this particular case, I'm going to put a little bit of grease, especially on the inside of the seal, because it's very important that the seal slips over the bearing, the inner bearing of that cylind cylindrical roller bearing that we installed earlier on the input shaft. That need, it needs to kind of slide right over it. So a little bit of grease on there is good. There we go. We're looking for a nice flush sit seat on there. Okay. Okay, brilliant. All righty. Okay, so basically we're ready to reinstall this gearbox into the motorcycle, but there's so many other things we need to work on first, so we're not gonna probably be doing that anytime real soon, but at least this component is ready to go. Now this is a very complicated, this is more, one of the most complicated procedures that we'll probably ever have to do on a BMW. And it may be a little bit much for a lot of folks because as you can see, you need a lot of special tools and you know, they're in some cases very expensive or in other cases really not even available anywhere anymore. So if you don't feel up to the task, you kind of have an idea what this, what it, what's involved in this uh, procedure, send it into us. We have really professionals here, guys that I've taught and my son is one of them. <laughs> and, um, and we can do a really good job for you. We guarantee your work, we stand behind it. We have all the parts in stock so we can turn it around quickly and give you a good, solid, dependable gearbox. We can do that with any of your components that you might want to send to us. In any event, we hope that you like this video and that you'll be subscribing to our YouTube channel if you haven't already, and of course to our newsletter. There are links to all the many parts we have installed on the gearbox and some of the tools, both here on the video and, at, and on our website. And as always, if you have any questions, let us know. And we will be happy to help you any way we can, making your two-valve BMW and keeping it on the road for many years to come. That's what we're all about here at Bakker Two Valve. This is William. See you next time.